All right, we are recording. That's what the screen says. I like it. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Insights Podcast presented by Vantage Pro. I am Duke. Way on the other side of the screen there is Mr. Van. And uh, we don't have enough time in this episode to properly introduce our guest today. Um, if we started going down his resume, like we'd need an entire half an hour probably just to do that part. So True. we're just going to call him the really smart audio guy, uh, <laughs> Mr. Dave Hatmaker. Oh, man. And, and musician as well. I know you're actually, we all know you uh, as, as Mr. Audio, but you're actually quite the musician as well from from the times i've heard you yes sir <laughs> all of the above thanks for having me by the way i totally appreciate it no it's it's uh, awesome and and van i know uh you got really excited when uh dave uh agreed to join us because yeah. uh D dave's been involved in in uh, some of the uh, tools that we really like <laughs> Yeah. Well, we were, we, I was in an uh, event a uh, while well, uh, a couple of days ago where Dave was speaking to a group of young tech people. And afterwards, uh, the parking lot conversation with he and I, of course, <laughs> and I get together are longer than his talk. Uh, right. We're standing out in the parking lot with everybody gone. We were the only people in the parking lot left. Uh, and we said, and I said, Hey, you should be on the podcast. And so uh, he was dumb enough. I mean, I, I, here i am with uh, <laughs> being on the podcast so so there you go yeah there you go. i hope you guys have some awesome topics we we do yeah. so so you uh uh one of your many many uh lifespans um you you lived at yamaha for a while um, and you were uh, pretty instrumental in a lot of what we know uh in the world of digital audio these days Tell us, a tell us a little bit about in a lot of products, <laughs> right? <laughs> what did that start with? What can we blame you for? Or what, what should we praise you for? <laughs> I was actually at Disneyland. I was, I was at Disneyland for uh, almost 20 years and then actually got headhunted by Yamaha to go work uh, for them in R and D. So actually my, I predate my Yamaha self in going back to Disneyland with even as far back as ProMix 01, uh, O1B96, all the O's, um, actually a little bit of DM2000, but that was just kind of a confirmation with Yamaha. What do you think? Um, okay. my, my, my probably biggest one at the time was I got to see O2R for the first time. And I had a show that was getting ready to be um, uh, designed called Hunchback. And we actually had the first two O2Rs. Fast forward a little longer, we were building a dark theater for the um, the actual, the whole corporation was the first dark theater it was in Anaheim in the new um, theme park called the Hyperion Theater in California Adventure. And there was a time where uh, the Yamaha people um, showed me the very first uh, PM1D. And so I had the first PM1D um, actually beta. I think there was a serial number, but it was, you know, something X'd out in that their serial number. So um, got that written, written in Sharpie. <laughs> right. Um, helped through a PM5D, M7, LS9. And I actually, um, my first project with uh, Yamaha was LS9 that that came under my development and then um, a bunch of analog all the MG mixers came um, then we had the flagship and it's no um, how do we say no secret that the flagship got um, a, a severe redesign that was in a delay then we got CLQL then we got a bunch of speakers and then sometime later we got the relaunch of PM, then now a relaunch of DM. And that's when uh, I had moved into retirement at the, just before uh, DMs were, uh, were, were being um, let go to the public. Hey, it's Van. I'm just going to jump in here for a quick second and ask you that if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up, please subscribe, click that notification bell and share this out on the socials if you can. And one more thing, leave a comment. We 
absolutely read them and we will respond to them. All right, back to the podcast. So it's a pretty so fun run. <laughs> I'll be honest, it was a it was a great run. Great technology. Yeah. So other than like the TF, you've pretty much been involved in all of current digital audio at Yamaha. <laughs> yeah, and actually TF2, that was my that was a, a quite a big project of mine and uh Chris Angel okay. and uh, Sean in Japan. Yeah, that was I'd forgotten about TF, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Um what what um what are some of the kind of interesting things that through the succession of all of those different consoles because obviously they all changed a lot over the years right what are some of the things that you kind of learned and and as the consoles and the te technology grew you kind of grew and changed as well uh technology wise i think um i think the networking the the back bone of how the system is actually deployed and used uh changed vastly um we went through tried to do it proprietary and then there was um cobranet that we dabbled in you know we had cards for everything uh ether sound was another iteration and then when dante hit um the fact that you could plug in um let's say similar but dissimilar devices uh, from different manufacturers uh, onto the platform on and off the platform with a patcher um, that changed everything i mean there was others that came and we can all discuss that um, we can say pros and cons of of all of them um, avb has come up a lot well that's a free one whatever but there's still no patcher so right. um Dante is, you know, everyone pays the same licensing, you know, nobody gets a better deal on licensing, you just pay the license and that gets pushed on to the uh, customer. But being able to have that uh, patcher, that changed everything that to me that that was a that was a paradigm shift in our business in the last 25 years, um, that so many people could get on it and and have it work. Um, and then they allowed that certain little bits and bytes that could be carried in the Dante stream, like a uh, head amp control. And, you know, you could have your own little proprietary little uh, pipe within Dante to, to do whatever the, the manufacturer needed to do within their own products. And that's where we went with um, like Rio's and TO's and our remote could work through the Dante network. Um, other technologies, I think just overall sound quality has gotten better up and down the whole, uh, um, our whole business, you know, not just Yamaha, but everybody has gotten better. Everybody sounds better. And I've said many times, um, with a modern system now, anything that's probably made in the last 15 years. And I'll, let me just say, Dave, not a graphic EQ guy. You don't need them anymore because the speakers are good good enough the consoles are good good enough the microphones are good good enough um there shouldn't be the need for i need 31 bands of suck filters I, it just is not it's not needed you know a modern pa if it's if it's one, one of the top 10 manufacturers there's going to be a, a, a kind of a not an auto tune but there's going to be certainly a setup wizard and you run the setup wizard and you're good. And then the console, you salt and pepper to taste, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, we, I can get it plenty loud, plenty loud. With any modern uh, top 10 branded speaker, I will not have anybody, any artist say to me, I just have to have more monitor. I'll, I'll be able to blister you. <laughs> yeah. I was, Even I church was, people. I, I, can't remember, I can't remember who I was talking to, but then this was a while back, but we were talking about any, anything, like you said, the top 10, I mean, the, 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 the range used to be huge. I mean, you had, uh, we jokingly, you know, all of us old guys remember Carvin, uh, right. so you had, like Carvin was down here and then like, you know, JBL and Nexo and, you know, and, and, and of course Meyer, you know, way right. up in the stratosphere here, but there was a lot of difference between the way a Carvin speaker sounded and the way a JBL speaker sounded. I mean, like, right. a lot. And, and now, uh, 
I don't know if Carvin's even a business anymore, but now if you take the, like you said, the top 10 there, it's taste, not efficiency, SPL, all that anymore. Right. It's, things are, and, and also like, you know, and what we do, a lot of it is, is application. It's come down right. to application. Like certain speakers have a certain application and certain ones don't, but I mean, it's yeah. real close and it's, 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 it's the closest it's ever been. And it's cool to have, as a manufacturer, have lots of tools in the tool bag, you know, when, when you have, say, a big giant uh, PM3 console or PM5 console, and it does hundreds of channels, and then to be able to scale back and go to a DM3, which sits on a desktop, I mean, there's a lot of horsepower in that, you know, that it's a it's a full on 16 or 16 by 16 USB or 18 by 18, I think USB interface um, plus plus plus, and you can use it as a stage box onto your DM platform or to your PM platform. I mean, it's it's pretty cool to be able to have a sub $2,000 products and over a hundred and some odd thousand dollar products, you know, that live in the same ecosystem. Yeah, I which think is that's great when you guys in church that, you know, if there's sometimes you you're you're looking to um, reuse parts as they change their usage of what you want them to be. Oh, today it can be a mixer in the in the um, high school room. And it can also be an interface for when you go out and you do a live event. Same box yeah. can have multiple purposes. Yeah, no, I think I think that's one of the craziest things about the last five to 10 years is, you know, it used to be you had to have real money you had to be of size to be able to take advantage of a lot of the current technology. And now we've actually got really good digital consoles starting under two grand, um, you know, and, <laughs> and, and and to scale. Right. Right. Um, it, it's it's kind of a, a crazy day to be um, getting to mix audio for sure. Right. You have all those things available. And I know I'm talking about primarily Yamaha because that was my lineage, but um, the manufacturers have caught up. It's horse races. I mean, it's there's there's these brands that are making everybody else be a better brand. You know, somebody yeah. will come up with a neat new thing, and everybody else will copy or figure out how to do it, maybe more efficient, efficiently or better. Or and then somebody else will come up with a new interesting something that's it's pretty cool. I mean, it, even in the the new um, Allen and Heath box, I was reading that it now has uh, auto tuning built in. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to pay for it. There's some something that you have right. to do. There's some, or you know, buy the their newest widget, whatever. But it has auto tuning built in, so that's pretty neat. The church has been wanting that for a long time, and and live events have been wanting that for a long time. So you don't need to bring another box, or you don't have to do waves, or you don't have to go outside the whoever's ecosystem it is you can right. just open the plug-in box and here's your auto tune i mean that's you know as we go every one of these rabbit holes we we can we can talk in technology of oh, has it but you still need some humans to operate it right so you still need singers and you still need somebody to know what key the song's in and you know it's not every not everything is panacea you know they they come up with the technology and we choose to use it. And how, do, how well do you use the technology? Well, and I think that's, that's the thing. I remember when, I remember when uh, ONVO2Rs came out and when, you know, we would have pastors like, well, can I just have that under the, um, under the, the podium? And then I can just mix the service myself or we can just have, we can just have a preset for everything. Just and we would be like, well, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could that, but i don't know if that's going to make it any better you know yeah um, just because you I, can doesn't mean you should right right i i think people are still looking for like you said the panacea people are looking for um to take oddly humans are looking to take the human element out of things consistently i don't i right? guess because they don't trust other humans because they don't trust themselves and that's a whole <laughs> other spiritual topic right but uh but you're never going to be able to totally do that because AI is never going to be able to make split second decisions about taste and, you know, creativity 
it's because it, it's just all it's doing is pulling from a database of right. these are the things that have to happen. So you you always have to have uh, people, you know, in the which is good, which is a good thing, right? I mean, that's that's what we want. But yeah, I think that it's really interesting. Of all the automation and everything we have, it still comes down to the person in front of the console and behind the console. Right. That does it, not. Let change. me let me um let me rabbit hole that just a little bit in in AI not AI is um through tf when we took it on me and chris taylor my colleague out of uh nashville we um we did a fact finding ex expedition where we we were the ones that set up created and set up the the presets for tf and then the the other consoles to follow so we redid them for clql and pm there's not as many in pm i think they arrived back in the dm class consoles but we get a lot of um flack for the for the presets and yet it's funny that we'll will not start with a reverb from scratch like zero like how much er do you want and how much high res do you want and how much you know what the room is and whatever no we we go hall or we go uh, number 21 or whatever or plate or old plate whatever <clears throat> but somehow that's way different than doing a bass drum Okay, I took a stab and um, Van was there at the, I did a microphone seminar for, for a, a church not too long ago. And Chris Taylor and I had done 20 bass drum mics through about six different bass drums, through about 10 different PAs. Anybody that would, what, that would have us go do a show, we would go do a show, but we would do it with only the, the presets, right? And I may not get Van's bass drum, but I'm going to get you a pretty good bass drum that's going to work to where you've got the band playing. And I think that's maybe the most important thing that we talk about today is the technology of getting the band to play together. That's like the biggest deal is if you get the band to play together, then before the service starts or whatever, I can make the minutia of adjustments, but getting everybody to play together is like, that's what we should all be after ultimately is that's what we're here for. We're here for the music, the technology, ah, whatever. And I've got a pretty good mic and I have an interface and we're talking over technology, whatever. But really we're, we're wanting to listen to three guys talk. You know, we don't want to, well, the mic doesn't make any sound. I might hear room noise, but the mic doesn't make any sound until I start talking in it or these guitars, which I'm not a guitar player, but these guitars don't do anything until you pick them up and you analog start playing them. So we got a lot of flack for the, for the, uh, presets, but I still stand behind those presets and many people have presets and try them. And if you hate them, that's okay. Or make your own. But we shouldn't spend so much time in the sound check starting over kick drum, doom, 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 doom. Really, you should probably be pretty close. Kick drum, doom, doom, snare. Like, let's move along. Like, let's, we, we should probably get better at our craft even before the band gets there. So when the band gets there, it's probably, I look and I go, 22 inch bass drum with XYZ microphone going into right here. I should already kind of have my path whatever technology it is. And that's brand agnostic that you should, you should probably know if you like 80 Hertz and you put a little bump at 80, you take out 400 and maybe you put a click in at 4k or whatever, just talking about bass drum, but we should all kind of have our, our pre dial. Thank you, Kevin Kimmel. If Kevin Kimmel ever listened to this, but Kevin friend of mine and another former colleague at Yamaha, he would talk about the pre dial, all the time because there was a show that he did we we both would mix it and i think van has been there at disneyland it was called uh, candlelight and there was an 80 piece orchestra and a thousand piece choir and you would oftentimes the thursday before the saturday and sunday gig you'd have one run through and the only time you would absolutely the first time you would hear the orchestra would be they would play scales going up. You might get them for 18 seconds, 20 seconds. <laughs> and then tick, tick on the, the conductor, tick off everybody. And here we go. Well, if you don't have the high pass filter set, you don't have the low pass filter set, you don't have the reverb set, and you don't have the, the um, 
the two mix overhead set and you didn't ring out the the choir mics, it was going to be a terrible night. <laughs> now, pause, crazy Kevin Kimmel, his night, there was rain on Thursday night. So there was no sound. There was no sound check. There was no anything. He's, I can't even remember the console that he, he was on. Maybe it was a 1D. So come Saturday, when it stopped raining at two o'clock and the show's at seven, he's, you know, dialing it in and low passing here and high passing there. And again, he knew the second that he was going to get the, the orchestra for the, the, you know, 16 notes going up and 16 notes going down. That's what he got. And here we go. Click, click, bam, the show starts. Yeah. So get them playing, get them playing. That you can see the excitement on my face, and I guess that's me being a drummer too. Is I want I want the sound guy to get out of my way when I'm playing a show. I I when when I hear okay kick drum and I'm like doom 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 I'm ready to go snare right now. Why doom 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 doom? Why am I having to wait? I don't want to wait on you. It should already be don't don't great Dave snare. Cha, 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 cha. Hey, by the way, we do a country thing, so I'm going to play like some country licks. Okay, thanks. No gates, please. Okay, great. Tom, <laughs> doom, doom. floor Tom, doom, doom. okay, kit, doom. that's a sound check to me. Should take right. 30 seconds. Well, but I like, think when I'm we, to the bass we drum. Were young, you know? Yeah, when we were young, we all spent 20 minutes on the snare drum. And, right. And what I, what you learn really quickly is that. It all has to work together. It doesn't work separately. So right. each thing has to, you just go, okay, I have enough gain on that. Great. Go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. And then I want to hear it all together. I don't know if you saw, um, this is dating the podcast, but but uh, I'm a big fan of a guy named Rick Beato. And oh, right. Yeah, you know, Rick Beato has a huge podcast. It's like millions and millions of people. Oh, watching. awesome. And Name he it. just Name had it. on uh, Dave Nattel. Dave Nattel is... The audio engineer Rolling for Stone. Van Halen, everybody. Stones, like Tina Turner, everybody. Right. And he's an old guy, older than right. we are. And if you hear him talk about um, just the way he does stuff, he says, nobody came to hear me mix. Right. <laughs> it's the artist. No one cares about me, and I like it that way. He goes, right. so he, and he just talked about how little EQ he uses, how little compression he uses, how little gates he uses and, and how much he just basically uses gain and ramps every turns every, he goes, I want it to sound like the band sounds just really loud. Right. And he was a kind of a guy after my own heart. I was hearing it because, you know, when I started out in church was a saddleback. And if anybody's ever been in that building, it used to be, just sound like a big Costco, but it was just a big echo chamber. And I had right. to learn how to remix in there. He said something I loved. He said, the PA is only going to sound as good as the room will allow it to. Right. And that was just like, yeah, I, I don't, but I don't think a lot of, you know, I guess I'm an old guy, but I don't think a lot of the younger mixers kind of understand that yet. So they try to overcompensate. They think they can fix it with plugins and, EQ for whatever, all the things. Right. And actually they can't, it's the right. room is going to do what the room is going to do and you have to adapt to it. And so right. learning how to go through and then get out of the way, like you said, and be, it should be the band and the performance coming out of the PA, not the sound engineer. Yeah. Why do I, as the, as the drummer, why, why do I have to instruct a, um, uh, let's say, a, uh, no, I'm going to, cause I'm in my head. I just went through, no, that guy was older than me. Uh, uh, <laughs> why do I have to instruct a sound guy on how to mix a little acoustic country band? You know, Hey, we play with dynamics and, um, don't gate me. Okay. That's, that's pretty cool. But then, Hey, can you turn off the reverb and the echo when the artist is talking? Like, how is that even? Why do I even have to bring that up? Sorry that we talk about all this technology. We're talking about, oh, the lineage of consoles and whatever. And still now we're talking about reverbs and echoes and when to turn them on and when to turn them off. Right. That's a. Well, I think the one thing that the one thing that all this technology has wrought is uh, you have 
15 more ways to screw things up if you don't know what you're doing. Right. Um, <laughs> so, you know, in analog consoles, it is what it is, right? It's in, right. It, the audio literally goes through the channel. Um, I was watching an interview with, with uh, Alan Parsons the other night, and he was just going, no, the the fader on the Neve that we had at Abbey Road, the audio actually went through that fader. It wasn't a DCA. Right. It lit right. the audio. <laughs> went. So if it was dirty, you heard it, right? And so it was right. just, it's just, you know, it. I think I think that a lot of people nowadays that di- haven't mixed for 20 years, they don't know the, they, they only know what they know. You know, and Duke and I talk about this all the time, how a lot of people don't, a lot of the younger people, they've only, or even older guys that, have just volunteered at a church. They've only mixed at that church with that console. And they don't know, right. they don't know audio. Like they don't expand their horizons. And, and so all a digital console does is because a digital console to me is it's like your best friend and your worst enemy simultaneously. It can be, you know, right. That's a funny one that you even say that in a technology for technology's sake is, is um, it's funny. I, I still insanely, because I'm a geek at heart, I, I stay on the blogs and I watch an Allen and Heath blog and I watch a Yamaha blog and SSL's blog and many Digico's blog. And it cracks me up still that let's put um, DM3 and CQ together. Like, let's say they're both 16 channel consoles and they have roughly eight outputs or you know two and six or two and four or whatever but there's some outputs and the first thing that people talk about is well there's no dcas (laughs) wait so i screwed myself up truth be told uh i was on a tf not too long ago and because you don't have the dcas on the on the top level all the time you have to you know cord press and hold two buttons to get to it and i'm like why don't i have that mic why don't i have that mic oh did i put that into dca ah dca is down right so we're we as manufacturers we're trying to make some of these products entry products and there is no way that these people can figure out how to get a mic to sound good to stereo let alone let me put it through a dca because i don't want to flip pages well wow Talking about a paradigm shift for me in technology is um, once upon a time, I was a religious bass drum is in channel one guy. Bass drum, the really got an eight, nine is bass, you know, on and on. And now I've absolutely changed the paradigm of when I go out with the Sean band is Sean is the first one because now I can teach anybody. None of the rest of this matters if Sean works. So, and now I go kind of importance, Sean, Sean guitar, Sean's acoustic, uh, the first vocal is um, the steel player's vocal and the steel, um, and then the steel. And then everything else absolutely is gravy. So if in sound check we make it to the third input, we have a show, we're going, we're absolutely gigging. If I get Sean, Sean, Sean's monitor, Sean's guitar so I can hear it, that's it. And we play like an old school 1966 country band in Bakersfield. That's it's just kind of fun that in all this technology we do and I've like changed. So it's funny. The very first question is how is your paradigm shifted or how, how has technology gotten you to the point where you are now? I've actually gone backwards, but the tool works better now and I can start with what matters the vocal they don't come to hear me mix or they don't come to hear me play drums they come for the marquee name and until your name is on the marquee the marquee name is going to be number one is that crazy well, I, think, I think regardless of how you set your console up there there's good wisdom there in knowing what your money channels are at all right. times um right I, I mean, you know, some of these smaller consoles I'll set up um, for a doer church. I'll set up like rhythm on layer one. I'll set up all the rest of the instrumentation instrumentation on layer two uh, vocals and speech on layer three. Or a lot of times I'll actually do that one on layer one Uh because I'm like, 
Yeah, your vocals, your speech, your pastor, like those are the ones you can't get wrong. So make sure those are on layer one and put that as layer one on every bank you have. So <laughs> that you know, no matter yes. what, where you are, what you're doing, layer one is your important layer, no matter what. Yeah. Um, funny story, and I'm sure he won't mind me saying it, but the mixer for Garth Brooks had taken out a PM1D, uh, no, a PM, a PM10 early on he was an early adopter and he loved he got used to the couple of faders on ql and cl and that we brought those back on um, pm um, i think they they're actually called a and b they're way over there on the right and he mm -hmm. has garth and garth's guitar and those are recall safe and the rest of the console could do whatever and you could interrogate and go to wherever you need but here's garth and here's garth's guitar and his hand never left there. So he got really good with the left hand in the touch screen and moving everything else. And should he have to go take a drink of Diet Coke, his left hand moved over to Garth and then he would, <laughs> you know, and then back at it because his finger never left <clears throat> Garth and Garth's guitar, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's exactly. really funny when we would, when we're setting up consoles for churches or anytime I'm teaching, I'm like, okay, here's your, here's your, worship leader vocal right and here's your worship leader's instrument and here's the pastor's mic those are over here they're not they're safe they're not in any scene they're not in a vca a dca showing my age there vca dca they're 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 not in any mute group so that no matter what you accidentally do <laughs> those three channels you can you can ramp those up you know you can you can have those on even if everybody else just takes a dump those three channels are ready to go so if the pastor you know i grew up when i first started going to church um i went to a pentecostal church and the pastor would just run on stage just randomly he had a word from the Lord and just right in the middle of the song, he just like right, stand right. up. And you know, when I was in high school, I'm running sound and I learned really quick that I better have my hand on that fader <laughs> on that old analog fender console. I think is what we right. you know what they had fender made the uh, fender sun. That's what it was. It was a fender sun that dates me. Uh, but had my, always, you know, at 17 years old that you got to have your finger right. on that. To, because yeah. he may just jump right up on the stage. Well, that is never. And you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote again my good friend Chris Taylor, and I'm 99% sure of Mr. Natal and me is I don't. I'm gonna say a giant statement like I just said about uh, graphic EQs. I don't like mute groups. I hate mute groups, and I almost more than I hate mute groups. I hate DCA being able to mute a DCA. <laughs> so I think, I think we, as techs, we want to do, we want to get to the point where we do the least amount of work as possible. And I'm going to say, get rid of that idea because I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look into the camera and I'm going to mute. That's pretty annoying. Right. But if to ramp myself up, I can't do it in analog or I'll, they'll, they'll lose my feed. But if I was, like this and then you can hear me talk right with a fader that's way less icky to listen to as i'm the consumer i'm sitting there listening to your concert than hearing and now you can hear me right that's right. a mistake it's a mistake that i can kind of get used to okay whoops he just had a brain fry or something but so to go back and go oh my mute group is on and my dca mute group is on uh, and my DCA is down. <laughs> my DCA. Is I'd down. rather you. I'd rather you don't mute the DCA, but have a page like we were talking about. Have a custom fader layer or something that has you know a DCA die or a DCA the worship band or whatever that they would come down that you'd bring them down because there's something different in the noise floor of when you ramp something up rather than you unmute it mm -hmm. yeah well i mean i still to this You're day the, i'll put the brain of dave <laughs> i'll put all the instruments i put all the instruments in their categories of dcas right and then i have a master band dca as well yep. uh-huh and but 
as far as vocals, I don't put them in DCAs and I don't put even the background vocals. I don't put them in DCAs. Obviously don't put the leads or the solos in DCAs or the pastor or any of that stuff. None of that stuff's in a DCA. So that the only reason I do the band thing is so I can take the master band and when somebody gets up to speak, I can pull the whole band down right, right, right. and keep my yep. mix and then ramp it back up when it all starts. Right. But because once you get that, it kind of all good, you want that die. I call it die. I think yep. Lee Fields calls it gas or something, but you can, right. you know, you can, yeah, you want it. Yeah. You want to be able to bring it up. But as far as the, the money channels, which I would say are vocals lead, lead, you know, whatever the lead guitar, whatever keyboard is, all that stuff. Yeah. I don't, because I've watched people and I've done it. I had something dual DCA'd. So I had, it in, like you know the band DCA and I right. have it on the drums DCA and for some reason <laughs> I didn't have one of those up and I'm, or the main DCA and I'm like why am I not getting any sound out of the console I have the DCAs up I'm seeing signal and it was because of that dumb DCA that I had down and you know and I've watched other people do it I've watched people hose themselves because they had they had too much control right too much control over stuff. It's just like what that Dave Nattel, he said he doesn't do any of that stuff. He doesn't even use DCAs. Right. <laughs> I mean, he still mixes. Um, who, who's he mixing right now? It's the stones. Right. He's on, mixing I that on a PM 4000. PM, right. He's, and uh, <laughs> their brothers are nice enough to keep, I think, eight of him, eight of them available for them. So they've got a couple in Europe and a yeah. couple in South America and a couple right. of here. He said, I have right. seven power supplies and three consoles on the truck. Right. He goes, now, on the the stage, they have a Digico for the monitors. Oh, right, right. Uh -huh. But he still has a PM4000 for the Stones. Right. Like, the one of the biggest tours going, right? One of the most it famous works, bands man. Ever. It's crazy. You know, it does. And how many of us have caught ourselves, you know, it's a, I've, I've gone in and I've, I've guest engineered, you know, I've come in and, and I've, I, I kind of purposely don't build a new file. I'm, I'm on somebody else's file and something will have been muted and whatever. And I look down and I go unmute and I catch myself of no, like, don't, don't do that. Do let me, let me pull, let me pull the DCA down. Then let me unmute and then let me bring it back up. Right. Yeah. So that I don't get the, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. Well, you can in the morning, you know, well, you can, you know, that's the thing. I think it's real important with the console technology. I know we've gone like 75,000 rabbit holes in this thing, but one of the console technology thing that I think is super important is, is to learn your console. You need to understand what's happening in your console. Um, when, you, when Alan Heath first came out with the, the current consoles that they have, I hose myself on an SQ5 because there's a place on every channel where you can have a direct you can have a direct out right at the front right. and you can bypass the fader, the DCAs, right. everything and it can go straight to any mix. Right, pretty right cool. From the, Powerful. Right from the head amp. And it's and it's a weird button if you're don't if you're not thinking about it. Right, right. And I I totally hosed myself with some uh very uh let's say sensitive to feedback microphones <laughs> <laughs> and when i turned the pa on all of a sudden everything started to feed back and it and i'm like what is i'm i'm uh, it was pre-mute pre -mute, for some reason right. so i'm muting i'm doing i'm like what is happening and it just feedback. Right. so i literally had to like unplug the console and then like work backwards to figure out wow. it took what me did I do, it, man? it took me like 25 minutes to go oh that is how did that i'm like how did that button get pushed you know Man, yeah but it just yeah i'm I mean, always nervous getting on somebody else's show file yep yeah just for those reasons because i don't know how things are routed um a lot of times i mean that's the first thing i'm checking these days is well, okay what dcas are everything routed to right um just so i don't have one that's like phantom muted somewhere um, right well, I find myself turning things off. Like, like if somebody has a, uh, um, a, um, waves rack, if I come in, I turn all of those off when I start. Right. Just when I start, I may pull them back in, 
And two things, we talk about that all the time on the podcast is, first of all, I think guys have too many plugins on stuff usually. Uh, it's fighting against, I'm, you have three SSL plugins on the same uh, instance, and you know that they're all doing, they're all doing something different. Yeah, totally different. I don't know yeah. why. And, and again, let's, let's chat about Lee just for one second. But if you know that you're doing something a little squishy in the front, and then you do a little something harder in the end, okay, you got it. But when they don't know what they what they're doing and it's three SSLs in a in, you know in serial is like ah uh, uh, I well, don't know and the, man well and then it causes latency and uh, you know a lot of things in church where a lot of times most of the time the in ears are being run off the house console right uh, I've had many instances where I come in and the and the worship has to be like there I we are out of time why are we out of time there's something really weird happening. And I'll find that high latency yep. plugins, right. like there right. are a bunch of the, a bunch of really famous ones, even if you put it in legacy mode, they are still right. still a lot of, and that gets into the in ears, and then all of a sudden they're all whacked out in their time signature right. because there's so much latency. And it's amazing, and yeah, yeah. And the minute you, I would, I remember going someplace and I just, I just turned them all off. And I said, "Hey, okay, let's do the first part of that song." And the, I he didn't get eight bars in, and he stopped, and he went, "That's awesome, right?" I don't know what the, you just did, the aha but that's moment, fantastic. You know, yeah, but that's fantastic. Leave it like that. Don't change. Whatever you do, don't change that. <laughs> you know, because it was screwing his ears up, and he knew something was wrong, but he didn't know what it was. And yeah. it was the it was the waves yeah. of plugins, knob creep, yeah, and then well, plugin because creep. people don't yeah. people don't understand what they're doing with them most of the time a lot of times so anyway yeah but you know so yeah yeah well this is good stuff i i, I wish we had like three more hours we could talk about digital right. consoles and all the things they're there yeah but we don't uh we will the hundreds of thousands of subscribers will just like tune in and you know it'll right. make you laugh a little bit well yeah, exactly. The, good, exactly. the good thing is is that dave uh is a kind of guy uh who loves to answer questions. And if you go to his website, Dave Hadmick, Dave Hatmaker.com, which will be in the show notes, uh, you can ask him questions and he will actually answer you. That's Thank the you. one thing I know about Dave is he will actually answer you. And he's available for parties and bar mitzvahs, whether it be a right. speaker or drummer <laughs> <laughs> or sound engineer, you know, it's huh. multifaceted, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. It just put a smile on my face. <laughs> Ah. Yep, that is very true. It's true. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, From Disney one of the things that Dave's been doing, which I think is awesome, is he's been speaking at a lot of conferences and stuff like that and really just sharing his, uh, what it, like, uh, you know, you're, you and I are. My giving back man. years, you know. Yeah. <laughs> many, many decades of, of, um, of uh, knowledge with uh, yeah. the next generation. So he's, that's Indeed. one of the things I love about you, Dave. And kudos to you guys for, for uh, having this great platform. I totally appreciate it. Thanks for the invite. And to the people that listen, yeah, give me a shout out. Yep. And we'll put yeah, we'll we'll that in the Van mentioned training. Uh, we want to get into that and we didn't have time in this episode. So we're going to, we're going to beg you to hold over and we're going to record another one. And uh, we've got some more good stuff for you. So uh, we're, we're excited. So uh, for, for all of you guys listening, uh, check, check the show notes below. Um, you'll see links to, to Dave's site and, uh, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and uh, for Van, because uh, he gets excited, like and subscribe. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> but thanks for uh, thanks for watching, listening, and uh, we'll catch you next episode.